Hi, good evening. i like to welcome you back to Poem Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. We are going to get right back into Rumi. We are now on page number one. And here is the picture on this side. Now, Demi, she is the author and the illustrator um, of this book. So let's go ahead and get into the book. And it goes like this. For children of all ages, whirling together in the spear, let's dance. Demi, Muslims, what to do? I no longer know myself. I am no longer Christian, Jew, Zoroastrian, nor even Muslim, nor of the East, nor of the West, nor of the land, nor of the sea, nor Indian, Chinese. Iraqi. I seek the one. I know the one. I see the one. I call the one. Rumi from Dewani Samzi Tabrizi. Hopefully I said that correct, but I I'm trying and let us keep moving. Love calls everywhere and always. We're sky bound. Are you coming? Rumi, from the wisdom of the Sufi sages. And this is the next picture. This is a map. Let's see the map. A note about Rumi. The whole world celebrated the 800th anniversary of Jalaluddin Rumi's birth in 2007. The year of Rumi as declared by the United Nations. Considered by many to be the greatest mystical poet who ever lived, Rumi was a simple man. He was a preacher in a small mosque in the corner of Turkey, where he once met a very special teacher. The teacher opened up Rumi's creative energies and inspired him with such a love of God and respect for Prophet Muhammad that Rumi's poetry has been unmatched for more than 800 years. The result of his life is contained in three phrases. I was right. I ripened. I was consumed. I'll repeat that. I think I put a, a, a D on the first one, but it's kind of like it's going from present past and then past tense. I was ripe, R-I-P-E. I ripened. I was consumed. Rumi lived in a part of the world that is now Turkey. It was called Asia Minor in English, but Rump by the Seljuk Turks. Rumi therefore became known as the man from Rum. Rumi's poetry speaks to the hearts of people in many lands and people of different faiths because he saw the love of God and everyone and everything. He wrote, the practice of lovers is separate from all religions because 
the religion and nation of lovers is God. Rumi believed that love is the root of all religions. God is the friend and beloved of all humankind. Dr. Lele Bakhtiar, Ph.D., translator of the Sublime Quran and author of Sufi Expressions of the Mystic Quest. There's that page and that page. A long time ago, on September 30th, 1207, a boy was born in the city of Balk, B-A-L-K-H, in Afghanistan. His parents named him Jalaluddin, Splendor of Faith, Splendor of the Faith. His first teacher was his father. He taught Jalaluddin, the Quran, the sacred book of Islam, and also the life of Prophet Muhammad, whom the Quran calls the mercy to humanity. In addition, his father taught him Islamic law, science, and mad. Jalaluddin loved learning new things and having his father as his teacher. Then one day when the boy was 12, news came that a terrible <laughs> warrior Genghis Khan and his Mongol army were conquering their homeland. Jalaluddin's father gathered his family and friends into a huge caravan and escaped from Afghanistan. They traveled through Iran, Egypt, Syria, Arabia, and finally settled in Turkey. Jalaluddin was now 18 and felt it was time to marry. He met a girl from his hometown who had been traveling with his family's caravan. Their wedding was celebrated with great joy and soon two sons were born. Sultan, Valad, and Aladdin. Or Aladdin, A L A I D D I N. Jalaluddin and his family settled in Konya, or Kanya, K O N Y A, the capital of Seljuk, Turkey. Every day, Jalaluddin would listen to his father's stories and hear him read from the Quran. Jalaluddin taught his own sons as he had been taught. Five times a day, before sunrise, afternoon, in late afternoon, after sunset, and at night, the family prayed. Soon, Jalaluddin was teaching many students. One day, a spiritual man named Sayyid Burhan came to visit Jalaluddin. He had lived as a hermit in the mountains, but when he met Jalaluddin, he was so impressed that he stayed in Konya and taught him everything he knew. Although Jalaluddin learned much about the spiritual world, he felt he had not experienced 
it for himself. Jalaluddin remembered that he had spent his youth traveling and meeting great teachers in Iran and that he had made a pilgrimage with his family to Mecca. He recalled meeting a spiritual teacher who had predicted that one day Jalaluddin would come to know the spirit of God. He was now 37 years old. He had become a famous religious scholar and teacher, devout and respectable. But he still had not experienced the spirit of God within himself. Jalaluddin had book knowledge, but he felt empty inside. He had almost given up hope of ever meeting a teacher who could show him the way. Then on November 29th, 1244, he met Shem Sudan, son of the faith, who was from the city of Tabriz in northwestern Iran. Shams, a learned man with great intuition and wisdom, had traveled through many lands looking for a student who would be inspired by his teachings. Shams taught Jaludin for three years. He was the best teacher anyone could ever have wished for. He said to listen for the sound of heaven. Emptying the mind of all thought. To hear the sacred sound of God, as Jaludin said later. It was time before dawn. In the sky rose a shining moon. It drew my soul from its human frame into the spear of spirits. Then Shams disappeared. During those, during those three years, Jalaluddin was reborn as Melvlana Rumi, a spiritual teacher in his own right, just as the spider weaves its web from within itself. Rumi began to recite poetry in Persian. Rumi had been a good preacher, but his creativity was now blossoming. He had never created poetry, and before meeting Shams, he had not thought much about it. But after his spirit had been awakened, he began to recite more than 50,000 rhymed couplets. He felt like he was no longer in control. Instead, his creative spirit was in charge. Rumi was able to describe angels because he had experienced their world. He recited. Whether they be like the new moon or the moon of seven days old or the full moon, every angel has its rank in terms of light and spiritual degree. Every angel according to its degree has a portion of radiance and three or four pairs of luminous wings. Just as the wings of our mind, amongst which there is a great difference in quality, the friend of every human being in good and evil, is the angel whose dignity is like his or hers. The stars shine for the sake of guidance, for the one who cannot bear the light of the moon. And this does complete take one. We've read all the way to page 15. So stay tuned for page 16. May peace and blessings 
be upon you and your family this evening. Until next time. Later, y'all.